Hello, and welcome to this morning time taste challenge, late morning taste challenge. This is for Wednesday slot. We have from 1914 Castillo Gold, Castillo Gold Rum from Bacardi Limited. It is on the website, it has sort of a really fine grain sandpaper texture on the label. I put a link to the Bacardi Limited website, but it doesn't, it's listed. That's all it tells you. They make it. It says our other brands, Castillo Gold, Silver, yeah, Niejo, and the Spice. So, I mean, they might make an overproof, but they don't list that one. But it has been around for over 100 years, Castillo. I think it was a company from Puerto Rico that Bacardi bought when they, Castillo SC, Castle and Company, which Bacardi bought out when they, moved to Puerto Rico in the 1960s. I'm not sure, but I have the feeling that's the case. Couldn't find out much information. Well, I do know about Ron Pantaba. Ron Pantaba was introduced in 1989, 31 years ago. It's a Bacardi brand. I mean, <laughs> ooh, Sazerac brand. It's, uh, they're both 80 proof. Now the Castillo has the nice metal cap, you know, it's a little fancier, but it's still only 7.99 a liter, one liter bottle. The Bacardi, uh, I mean, the uh, can't get that out of my head. The Ron Pontalba was six ninety nine for the liter. So it's always been made by Sazerac. No buyouts, just a brand they came out with in 1989. They make the silver, which I have, very good product. The gold, this one is not too good. They have the uh, spiced, the Añejo overproof. I've not seen those. I know they're, they exist. Okay. I don't think it's going to be much of a challenge. I think the Castillo is going to be clearly better, even though it's got a lot of faults. If you want to pay more and get the Bacardi Gold, it's got a lot better flavor. But if you want to cut, you know, cut corners and get some cheap Castillo Gold is is acceptable. It just has some strange exotic flavors, like to me olive oil. I don't know what the story is about. Okay. But if you can get it for $7.99 a liter, I'd suggest that you probably won't see it that inexpensive, though. You might see it in your town for $7.99 a bottle, $7.50, you know, standard bottle. But a liter, I doubt it. But I have a tendency around here to find extremely low prices for products. It's not a great talent that I have. It's just um, they have some places around here that have great prices. I just happen to find them. Well, they're both clear and gold. I think the Castillo, you can probably notice, probably see that, that the Castillo is a little lighter. It's more golden. And the uh, Pantaba is more amber. Does the Pantaba have coloring added? Almost certainly. The Castillo probably does. Doesn't say it on the label. Guess what? They don't have to disclose it with rum. <laughs> you can't add color into bourbon. Well, you could add color into blended bourbon, but not straight bourbon uh, or just regular bourbon. There's two different types. There's bourbon and straight bourbon, but that's another story. Can't add color into that, but you can add color into rum, Canadian whiskey, American blended whiskey, Scotch whiskey, Irish whiskey. Okay, so um, and you don't have to give a disclosure on the label. Now, what about Lichtensteinian whiskey? I don't know. What about whiskey from Somaliland? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Whiskey from uh, the Republic of China ta on Taiwan Island or the Pescador Islands or Matsu and Kinmen Island. I really don't know. Okay. I assume it's the same rule. Cheers, says Timothy Lamp here. T cheers to you. What about whiskey from Pitcairn Island? I don't know. All right. Thursday, I'm planning to do another Canadian taste challenge. What are they? The Northern Lights, which I'm doing a long march through the taste challenges. The Northern Lights versus everybody. That'll be Royal Canadian, been on the market 
for 86 years, 86 years of anonymity, basically. And uh, um, then Friday night, I think I'm going to do Canadian Hunter against the Northern Lights. So we'll do Canadian Hunter, the, the Northern Lights from 1980, 1968, sorry, 1968 versus Canadian Hunter from 1984. I did see they had two bottles of the old, old label Seagram's Canadian Hunter at International Market, but I didn't buy it. It was only $8.99, but I said, that stuff's probably 30 years old. It's probably fine, but is it going to be any different? I don't know. And even if it was different, what would that prove? You can't get it. I mean, they got two bottles of that market, but most people can't get it. You say, oh, so... You bought Canadian Hunter from 1990 or 1988, and it's different than the current Canadian Hunter. Your, your point might be, but so what? No one even cares about Canadian Hunter. And I would say, yeah, it's probably true. So I just didn't spend the money, and I'm glad I didn't. But it is kind of neat to see these old bottles floating around, 30, 35-year-old bottles. Okay. Um, and then Saturday morning. Oh, so Friday night for Fandango Friday. I think I'm going to do that. The, uh, the Northern Lights versus Canadian Hunter. And then Saturday morning, the Northern Lights versus um, Canadian Limited. And then Sunday morning, this is all, if it happens, you know, something could have come up, but I'm planning it. And the Northern Lights versus rich and rare, rich and rare. I always think about these things like plan them out. Like, what am I going to review next? What am I going to um, taste challenge next? That's the excitement for me to do the brands. I just like trying different brands. All the other stuff I don't care about. I mean, I do political videos sometimes. Uh, that's just somebody's opinion. And I do music reviews. That's just somebody's opinion. But all this other stuff, I'm not into it. You know, I'm just not into it like this craft beer versus macro beer struggle in the beer world. And people are like, whose side are you on? And I say, I'm not on anybody's side. I don't even care. Okay. I just like to, to look at different brands and to see about the history of the brand and what I think about it. All right. It's just the truth. I, I try to be honest on this channel, you know, so this stuff about what well, they got bought out and this company had internal problems and this employee said this and all that. I mean, I just don't care. It's kind of interesting just as a news piece, but as like a part of this channel, we're doing all of this and we've got to make this point and it's got to be this. Uh uh, forget it. And my friend David's the same way. He just reviews stuff like, oh, let's try this. Oh, let's try that. Just for the fun of it, not to make some greater, like I said this years ago, I'm not on a great quest. You know, you watch some of these channels, it's like they're on this great quest. We have this great goal. We're trying to reach this great goal. And I'm like, what? What goal are you reaching with just alcohol brands? As long as the beer tastes good, I don't care who makes this. It's Johnny Tactical, right? So if you're part of some big movement or if it's your concept is we're winning, we're winning. This is not a channel for you. Hulk drink, not smash. Right. So I'm already, I am already know which is which here. So no great quest, just me trying different products and then moving to the next one. There's no end game. There's no end game. I'm not selling T-shirts, mugs. I don't have a Patreon account so you can give me money. Why would you ever want to give a beer reviewer money? Like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Okay. So this is the Castillo Go Y. It has that funny taste that I can't pin down. I was calling it olive oil or something. It's some, it could be like the wood they're using, like some kind of strange oak. You say, but they all use white oak. I know, but um, they don't have to. They might use swamp oak or water oak. I don't know what the, it's, I can't figure it out. 
what other rum does this smell like? None. I never smelt a rum that smelled anything like this. It's not bad. It's not rancid. It's not off. That would be <laughs> the Ron Rio white. It smells like Roundup and rancid sugarcane stalks. This just smells weird. Now this one over here. First thing, it doesn't smell like much. It's very dull in the nose. And you know that's Ron Pantal because it's only $6.99 a liter. It's just basic. It has a little aroma. And what is the aroma? Oh, I was wondering what that noise was. That's the United States Postal Service. <laughs> um, the flavor is going to have like alcohol. It tastes like rubbing alcohol, basically. I've never drank rubbing alcohol, but you know, you know, you smell it. That's made with wood alcohol. It will kill you if you drink it. Okay. Um, Got to get another LSU Tigers cap, I guess, now since they won a national championship, finished 15 wins, zero losses. I have so many caps and shirts, though, really. Do I really need one? But I'd like to have one said national champions 2019, 2020, whatever, 2019. But um, I certainly don't need it. I didn't see anything at Walmart. Well, what will happen is they'll flood the market with all of these commemorative caps and shirts. And then they'll sell out in like two days. But then more will come out. And then the frenzy will start to die off and then there'll be a lot left over and then after a while they'll start discounting it because they won't be able to get rid of it you know what i mean it just linger around but i mean if i see one i buy it i'm not gonna be desperate to go run by it they had people last night waiting outside at one in the morning 11 at 11 55 p.m 12 50 one in the morning for these sports shops to open up and they had them ready but that's and you know the price wasn't going to be cheap that's craziness to me It's your money, though. I mean, if you want to do it, why not? Heck. Um, this is very basic. It's just like alcohol. Just neutral spirits. I'm serious. Can you make a neutral spirit out of sugar, cane syrup? Yes, you can make it out of any kind of vegetable matter. They usually use corn, right? Subsidized grain, United States corn syrup, corn grits, corn powder, corn starch. I don't know, whatever they're using. And they distill it down into, you know, they mix it with water and do their distilling method. And they distill it down to 100%, nearly 100% alcohol. It's like 190 proof. Then they cut it with water, bring it to 80 proof, and then they mix it with gin and eat it, use it to make gin, rum. I mean, gin, vodka. And then rum is the same. Like It's like they're taking sugar cane and they're just distilling it to odorless, colorless. And they're adding color to it to give it some. It's not, it's, it doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't taste like anything worth buying. There's some wood though, honestly. There is a little oak. A little charcoal, a lot of water. It's just bland. Would I ever buy it again? I would never buy it again. But I figured six ninety nine. Even if it's bad, I haven't lost anything, and it wasn't bad. I mean, I pretty much knew it wasn't going to be bad. I just said there's a good chance. There's a pretty good chance going to be dull, dull, dull. And you know what? I was right, right, right. By that same measure, Castillo's should be that way because only a dollar more for a liter, but it's got a lot more character coming from the house of Bacardi. Um, lots of wood here. I mean, heavy charred oak. All right, so this is a, lo a lot more serious product. Heavily charred oak, that strange, I say olive oil character. I don't know what that is. Um, light molasses. I mean, it's, I've heard people say, and I don't agree with them, but they've said on this channel, I prefer Castillo gold over Bacardi. 
it's cheaper and it's better. I don't agree with that. I think the Bacardi Gold is way better than this. But that's $13 a bottle or more. And this is $7.99 a bottle. We're talking about regular size bottles. I mean, I got this crazy price, but you, like I say, you're probably not going to find that. I would pay for the Bacardi. It is worth the extra money. Okay. So in my estimation, in my booklet, you pay the extra and you get way more. You might say, well, I just don't have a lot of money. I'm sorry. My job is not too lucrative. I, I, I struggle to pay rent, mortgage, whatever. I have a lot of bills and I don't really have a lot of leeway and I need, I would like to drink something enjoyable or at least marginally enjoyable that I don't have to pay too much. Okay. Well then this will be perfect. You don't have to pay a lot and it's, it's got character. It's, it's okay. It's good. It's, it's literally good. Not just argumentatively good. Nice, pleasant sweetness, sugariness. It's like 80 proof candy. <laughs> you say 80, per 80 proof candy, huh? 40% alcohol candy. Yeah, sort of like that. I wouldn't eat too much of this candy, though. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend eating too much of this candy. Now, what about this homely little thing? Well, it's, I think I gave it a B minus when I scored it, but it probably was too high. It's not, it isn't very delightful. It probably is the least enjoyable gold rum I've tried so far. And my sampling portfolio is not extensive for rum. It's becoming so. But at this point, it's really at the early stages. You say, well, you're, only, you're 51 years old. When do you plan to really get deep into it? Well, you know, like maybe by 71 or 81 years old, I should really be getting a handle on it. You know what I'm saying? That's the problem. Once, by the time you get really good at it, then you die of old age. But if you died at 97 years old and you were doing all these challenges and trying to live a good, respectable life, it would be a pretty good thing, right? More, more sirens. So, um, even if you live to be a hundred, you did, you still would just be tipping the iceberg. You know what I'm saying? You just be scratching the surface. You can't try everything. It's an incredible array of liquor. Just say rum. You could do a rum channel. Never going to cover, but just a handful of items. It's just, and every time you turn around, they're coming out with something new. It's like whiskey. Every time you turn around, they're coming out with something new. And then there's all the variants they don't list on the website. Ah, uh, international market market has this uh, George Dickel. I never heard of it. I never heard of it. If I give it to my friend David, he'll go crazy. Like, what is this? Oh, no, no, I can't believe it. You know, it's the same thing with beer. So you can't ever cover it all. And then you see people doing videos on YouTube. You just got to take a deep breath and let it go. And say, I can't get it. I got to trade for. It. I mean, if you want to trade for it, that's fine. I don't. I don't want to be part of that. But if you want to do it. And y'all can trade back and forth. That's fine. I, I, I personally don't like to do it. It's a hassle to me. But um, but even if you do that, you're never going to You'd be like a hamster in a cage. You're never going to get anywhere. So it's best, like I say, take a deep breath and say, can't try everything. I can try a lot of things and I can experience all of this. But I can't do it all. Okay. With beer, I, I see these things everywhere I turn, and you just want to try it all. I see the liquor. I want to try everything, but it's not practical. We have to put it in perspective in a certain context. You're the same age as Dave Grohl, Foo Fighters frontman. It's his birthday today. Oh, okay. He's 51 today. Well, I'm older than him. Well... 
he could come on here and do some taste challenges with me or some examinations if he'd like. I don't know if he's into doing these uh, these types of things. I like that video they made where they were on the airplane, <laughs> whatever that was. One of those catchy 1990s tunes, you know, those mid remember in the mid 90s, they all, all these um, alternative bands, or they used to be grunge, you know, they, oh yeah, learning to learn to fly. They all of a sudden, that quick, transformed into power pop bands. I was like, yeah, give me a break. They want to make money. <laughs> And but uh, there weren't too many standouts. They had the Foo Fighters and a few, but most of them were just like rehashing, co copying each other, trying to sing like, and I'm so anxiety and I'm made out of mud and I want to die. And I was like, I'm not listening to that. <laughs> You can make me garbage. Yes, yeah, so around 1996, everybody at the same time realized, hey, you know what? This stuff is terrible. <laughs> and then they couldn't, uh, didn't matter how many pants you had ripped and hair needed to be washed and how many times you jumped into the audience. They just weren't buying that stuff. But some people continued on and tried. They tried. Not with a whole lot of success. Okay. Um, My sister, she was a lot younger than me, 10 years younger, so she was into all that. She was like, isn't this exciting and new? And I was like, no, it isn't if you grew up and you knew about the Sex Pistols and all that. This is like not new. It's like the same thing again. <laughs> oh, I got to stop talking. But that was, it really was not that new and, and it wasn't that exciting to me. But I'm older and more I was gonna say cynical, but actually I'm more aware. <laughs> I'm more aware of what was happening, so I can't say I was cynical. All right, anyway. Castillo goes to clear a winner. Oh, I never even checked the glasses. I didn't switch them up. Yeah, Castillo go. As if I needed to check. It's the clear winner, the clear winner. I mean, it's not even close. It's not even close. Um, it's not even a jacket little pill. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Pontaba, sorry. Sorry, Sazerac. I'm going to pay the extra dollar and get the Castillo gold. But to tell you the truth, I'm not even going to get that. Because why, while Castillo Gold is back home, you know, smoking their Dinoblas and drinking Anaceta and eating that three, you know, fried pig guts, I'm going to be buying Bacardi Superior. I mean, Bacardi Gold. You are spot on. My sister graduated high school in 1998, mine in 96. And I had all those one-hit grunge wonders, annoying sounds. How about those tigers last night? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, somebody called me, and he was saying, uh, I could tell they were at a party, probably partying. They seemed uh, exuberant, let's say. But he says, I bet you were getting worried, huh? I said, no, I'm not getting worried. I said, well, a little worried, because <laughs> after Clemson was going up, strong at first. I said, but I, I figured they're going to win. And uh, they did. I just figured that they had more firepower. They had more firepower and they knew how to use it. No knock against Clemson. They had a good two-year run. Two years, they didn't lose a game in two years. I mean, come on. But uh, I think even Clemson kind of knew they were going to lose. They kept complaining about it. I know that's Dabo Sweeney's little like psychological warfare. You know, we don't get any respect. We're not really that good. I guess we'll just show up and kind of probably get killed. You know, they're plotting you know, to win. But um, 
kind of like Bear Bryant used to do. Well, I, I am very worried about Tulane. Uh, I'm quite concerned when we play uh, Tulane. He had that cigarette smoker's voice. Well, when we play Tulane at uh, Tuscaloosa, uh, I'm, no, you used to always play him in Mobile. I'm uh, pretty concerned. Uh, Tulane won two games last year. Now, the year before, they, they were 0 and 11, 0 and 10. Oh, they've got a mighty fine uh, offense and, uh, and a terribly frightening defense. And then uh, everybody watching it, like, come on, what are you talking about? Then Alabama win like 59 to 0, 59 to 3. <laughs> but you know that coach talk, you can't pay much mind to that. And then you got Ed Ogeron, you know. We're going to show up. We're going to be serious. We're ready to play. Les élèves vont tomber. Mes amis. Très bien. Au revoir, mes amis.